Uh, I'll start my screen share. Yes. Uh, is my presentation visible? Yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, GSC seminar series. Uh, we are back after the spring the spring break, and I hope everyone everyone had a good spring break. So uh, let's see our sorry. Let's see our team uh, for this year. We have Roshan and Rachel, who are the coaches for GSC for this academic year. And then we have our publicity team, which has Reza and Avinash. Reza is from the IIC and Avinash is from the AME uh, school. Then we have our support team, uh, which has Anirban, Emmanuel, myself, Nazli, Filani, and Andrew. And our mentor for the year is uh, Farooq Misri. Uh, AME GSC has regular meetings every day, uh, sorry, every week at 4 p.m. every Fridays. Uh, all our meetings are held via Zoom. And if you are able to join, uh, I invite everyone to join our meetings and they are usually uh, held through Zoom. You, if you want to join, you can contact Rachel on her email ID or Roshan uh, on his email ID, which are given on the screen in front of you. Uh, the time of the schedule, uh, the time of the, uh, uh, the meetings are, can be varied if you are not available at four o'clock in the evening, we can schedule the meetings according to you if there are any uh, specific reasons. Oh, my screen, okay. Uh, we have a GSC member page on Engage. Uh, this is our QR code. You can scan this QR code and log in with your OU ID. Click join on it, and then you become the uh, member of GSC. I'll keep the screen on for a couple of seconds so that if anyone wants to uh, join, you can uh, just scan the QR code and uh, join our page on the Engage. Uh, GSC also has a Facebook page where we post regularly our uh, updates. Uh, the link for the Facebook page is given over here. You can also uh, type OU AME graduate student community in the search bar on Facebook, and you will be directed to our G uh, GSC Facebook page. Uh, please feel, feel free to join the, uh, to like the page and you'll get some updates from there as well. Uh, GSC also has a YouTube page. Uh, the, the name of the channel is AME Graduate Student Community, OU. Uh, all our uh, GSC seminars are recorded. And if you are uh, not able to attend the meetings in person, uh, like during the actual uh, seminars, then you can watch them on our YouTube channel. Uh, we upload all of them uh, on, our, on our YouTube channel as well. The link is given. You can also search the AME Graduate Student Community OU on the YouTube search bar and you will be directed to our YouTube page. Uh, coming up to, coming on to the Dave and Susan Bird team room. Uh, this is the, our GSC team room, which has been uh, appointed to us by the department. Uh, we have some good amenities like couches, whiteboard, coffee pot, microwave oven. Uh, all the graduate students are, uh, are, are allowed to use the, these, uh, this room. Uh, you can email either Roshan uh, or, uh, or Rachel, whose emails were given before. You can just email them saying you, you need to use this room. Uh, make sure that uh, you keep the rooms clean whenever you are uh, leaving out of the room. Uh, a quick reminder, we have a, a Google form, uh, which will be the link for, uh, for that will be posted in next few minutes uh, on the Zoom. Uh, please, uh, please sign up that sheet so that we have the record of the people attending our seminars. Uh, it helps us a lot for our future seminars. 
Uh, our upcoming events, we have uh, Tim Filey from IREEOU, and they'll be speaking on the initiatives and opportunities at the IREE Research. Uh, that will be on the 31st March and uh, the same time. And uh, our, the one after that will be by Rui Zhu, who is from the ISE, and will be speaking on optimization of senior integrated healthcare systems. Uh, this seminar will be on the 6th of uh, April uh, at the same uh, 12 p.m. time. Coming to our today's uh, presentation, we have Fatima Tarannam, uh, who will be speaking on manufacturing of high thermal conductivity polymer composites. She is a PhD candidate uh, under Dr. Jyutesh Garg, and uh, she is in the School of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, she has also completed her MS from uh, OU as well, and she has also received uh, an award and a scholarship during her time at OU. So without wasting any time, I, uh, I invite Fatima on, uh, on the platform and uh, share her presentation with us. Thank you so much, Shapnin. I'll uh, start sharing. I would like to thank you all uh, for joining me today. And today I'm going to uh, present one of my current research topic titled Manufacture of a High Thermal Conductivity Polymer Composite. I'll begin with the overview of the research topic. Uh, efficient thermal management system essentially requires high thermal conductivity material for efficient heat dissipation. And the main objective of this research topic is fabrication of high thermally conductive material using polymer. One of the carbon-based uh, filler, expanded graphite, has been used as filler to blend uh, with polymer matrix uh, and make a composite. So solution mix, uh, casting technique has been used uh, in uh, my experimental work to mix the filler and polymer together. And we took the advantage of this preparation topic to observe the thermal properties of the uh, composite. Field emission electron um, uh, scanning electron microscopy, X-ray diffraction, and Raman characterization tools have been used to analyze the morphology and the crystal structure of expanded graphite and also the uh, prepared composite. Through this research, you have achieved uh, an in, uh, achieved enhancement in polymeric composite, which has a huge potential in uh, thermal and electronic industry. Currently, there is a huge power consumption due to the miniaturized components in the modern electronic industry. We are using multiple electronic devices along with the heavy internet for our ready purpose. Here I am presenting a chart which shows that active uh, mobile users number in billion with respect to year. Uh, you can see in 2022, there is 15.96 billion more active mobile user, and this is going to rise up to uh, 18.22 in 2025. This is a small example of high power consumption in our near future. This kind of high power consumption can cause overheating of the devices, and that can cause a uh, lower heat dissipation rate, and also it can reduce the uh, durability of the material. So to cope up with the with this kind of high power consumption, we really need efficient thermal management thermal management system, and high thermal conductivity material is strongly required for achieving such high efficiency. Metals have been mostly used in the industry due to its high thermal conductivity of more than twenty watt per meter kelvin, whereas the polymer has less than 0.5 watt per meter kelvin. Uh, but polymer uh, can outperform the metal leak material due to its superior physical advantages like lightweight, low cost, corrosion resistance, and excellent possessibility. So, uh, 
So manufacturing polymeric material uh, with high thermal conductivity value can enhance the, uh, uh, can replace the metal in uh, uh, industrial application. And that's why the main objective of my research is enhancement of thermal conductivity of polymer. Addition of carbon-based uh, filler can enhance the thermal conductivity of uh, polymer because carbon-based filler has very high thermal conductivity. Graphite is the most cost-effective and uh, an abundant filler among the carbon uh, among the carbon-based fillers. But because of their flaky nature and high density, um, graphite is not the preferred form of uh, a filler to achieve required thermal properties, but modified graphite with heat treatment can turn them into beneficial reinforcement material. Graphite is composed of alternating carbon layers and the carbon atoms are covalently bonded along the inclined direction of these layers, while these layers are uh, bound by much weaker van der Waals force through the thickness direction. And this makes the intercalation possible. Graphite intercalated compound or GIC is a form of graphite which contains acid molecules or um, oxidizing agents in between the layers uh, because of the uh, intercalation process. Here you can see a schematic il illustration of um, graphite intercalated compound. Uh, the intercalated compounds are uh, in, present in between the layers. So at higher temperature or like 900 degrees C, we can uh, we can um, we can see that this uh, kind of uh, intercalated compounds try to escape uh, from these layers, and which makes uh, the which makes the graphite to expand through the thickness direction, and that leads to a puffed up material. Uh, popped up material and that is known as the thermally expanded graphite. Here uh, you can see an image of graphite intercalated compound which is still look like a flaky graphite uh, graphitic structure but after the expansion you can see the graphites are uh, much more uh, exp like expanded uh, along the uh, length and these are uh, the expanded graphite we can get at high uh, temperature. That are like if we treat them at high temperature. So usually uh, this expanded graphite has various properties like uh, highly porous structure, uh, lightweight, and uh, it has a low de lower density like 0 0.002 to 0 0.02 gram per centimeter cube. It has a thermal conductivity of uh, around uh, seven, 470 watt per meter Kelvin. The kind of expanded graphite we have used in uh, this work that has average diameter of 180 micron and length of three to five millimeter. You, here I'm uh, showing like three, um, MA, three FEACM images uh, with three uh, different ma uh, magnification. Here, uh, the first image is representing uh, like a worm like structure, like after the expansion. And the second one is showing the porous structure that is present in bit in this uh, in this expanded graphite. And uh, at higher magnification, you can see how uh, these um, graphite layers are getting separate, getting separated in uh, different uh, graphene layers. So significant research has, has been done on thermal properties of expanded graphite polymer composite. I'll present some, uh, some of them. Who at all uh, uh, measured the thermal conductivity of uh, single expanded graphite and it was found to be um, three, uh, three to five watt per meter Kelvin. Um, and one at all also uh, uh, May prepared a composite using um, uh, expanded graphite to the melt mixing technique, and he found uh, they found that uh, expanded graphite and polyethylene glycol composite with uh, thermal conductivity uh, is 1.3 watt per meter Kelvin at 10 watt percent uh, expanded graphite composition, and that indicates 344 percent enhancement with respect to pure polymer. 
we had all also uh, um, prepared the expanded graphite and polymer composite using powder mixing and thermal molding. And they have used uh, a low density polyethylene to prepare the composite. At four, at eight uh, volume percentage, they found around 4.5 watt per meter Kelvin, which is 1263% uh, enhancement with respect to pure polymer. Now, uh, the solution casting technique has been uh, used in this work to fabricate the expanded graphite and polymer composite, and polyethylamide has been used as a uh, polymer matrix. And you can see this is the chemical structure of uh, polyethylamide. We can also call it as uh, PEIDP. Um, so to disperse the filler, first uh, we used uh, dimethyl acetamide or DMAC. Uh, solvent, uh, we disperse the expanded graphite filler into the solvent and separately we dis dissolve the polymer into DMAX solvent. And then we mix the, uh, both, the, uh, both the solution together and uh, we kept on stirring at 100, 130 degrees C. Uh, so after uh, keeping it on stirring three to four hours, we did ultrasonication for 40 seconds. And then we poured the mixture, uh, solution mixture at 100 degrees C, uh, uh, 100 degrees C uh, in a petri dish, uh, so that uh, it get cured within 24 hours, and we can get achieve a composite film, uh, which is made of expanded graphite and polymer. So also for comparison, we have prepared a polymer composite based on the graphene nanofiller. Some uh, and we, we followed the same process uh, to get the composite. And to compare, also we uh, use different concentration of filler of 2.55, 7.5, and 10 weight percent um, filler. So Field emission electron, uh, field emission scanning electron microscopy has been used to characterize the uh, expanded graphite and polymer composite, and it plays crucial role to understand their morphology in this composite. And here I'm presenting uh, two images at two different magnification of the uh, five weight percent expanded graphite uh, polymer composite. You can see that. The porous structure is still present inside the composite, and the solution casting technique is playing a beneficial role in retaining the porous structure of the filler in the composite. And it also allows uh, the filler, uh, it also allows the liquid polymer to get filled into this uh, porous structure. From this image, we can say also the continuous graphitic network is present in the composite, and that can lead to efficient heat conduction in the composite. We uh, also characterize the expanded graphite filler and intercalated uh, graphite compound um, using uh, XRDX or X-ray diffraction uh, tools and Raman uh, analysis tool. So XRD and Raman analysis has been done to observe the crystal structure and structural defect of graphite intercalated compound and expanded graphite before and after the expansion process. XRD, exp uh, XRD spectra uh, basically shows the peak intensity uh, with respect to two theta for uh, graphite intercalated compound and EG filler here. In the XRD spectra, you can see that for GI, uh, for graphite intercalated compound, which is uh, shown by this blue curve, um, that uh, there is a strong peak at 26.1 degree, uh, of which is slightly shifted from natural uh, graphite, uh, and that is typically present at 26.5 degree. Um, but uh, also for um, expanded graphite, we can see there is a reduced sharp peak, which is visible at 26.4 uh, degree. Uh, that is actually uh, caused due to the uh, disorder in graphitic morphology uh, due to the expansion process, S but still uh, it is mostly aligned with this um, uh, graphite integrated compound uh, peak, which means that the existence of intact um, chemical structure of graphite is still there. And also we did Raman spectroscopy to analyze the structural defect of the graphite intercalated compound and expanded graphite filler. 
So this uh, Raman spectra is uh, showing the intensity with respect to Raman shift for uh, expanded graphite and graphite interpolated compound. Uh, the blue curve is showing uh, the Raman spectra for graphite intercalated compound and the red spectra is showing the Raman spectra for expanded graphite filler. Usually uh, Raman spectra uh, exhibits to, um, in, uh, to inherent peak of G band and D band at around uh, 1580 and 1350 uh, for uh, D band. And the D band basically signifies the stretching of uh, uh, defect free square carbon of hexagonal ring and the D band represents the uh, Mm, amorphous disorder uh, represents the vibrational mode which is caused by the uh, which is caused by the basically amorphous and uh, disorder structure of sp cube hybridized carbon and IDIG ratio uh, characterizes the defective state of the carbon using the ratio of these two intensity uh, of d band to the g band dic or graphite intercalated compound subjected to the um, preparation procedure from the natural graphite and which induces this G band in the graphite intercalated compound. Um, so this GIC spectra implies that uh, the, mm, there is an IDIG ratio of 2.24 uh, due to this uh, D band. Uh, and in expanded graphite, you can see there is a negligible uh, peak, peak for D band. That means uh, during the expansion process, uh, the, uh, the intercalated compounds are getting diffused uh, into uh, gas and that leads to ordered graphitic structure um, uh, inside this, inside the own like structure of expanded graphite. And the high degree of ordered structure of graphite, uh, even after thermal expansion, and add the beneficial impact actually uh, on the thermal conductivity enhancement of graphene polymer composite. So now I'll discuss the result we achieved through this experimental work. Through the thickness, uh, through the thickness reduction thermal conductivity value of composite has been measured using the laser flash technique. And this graph is representing the true thickness thermal conductivity uh, with respect to uh, graphene filler, con uh, the filler concentration of 2.55, uh, 7.5, and 10 weight percent uh, content. Uh, and, and this curve is representing the thermal, uh, true thickness thermal conductivity of expanded graphite polymer composite and uh, graphene nanoplatelet and polythermite composite. So here the blue uh, red curve is representing the expanded graphite and polythermite composite thermal conductivity value. And the blue curve is representing the graphene nanoplatelet polythermite composite thermal conductivity value. At, uh, you uh, can see at for 10 8% composition, we have achieved 6.6 .6 watt per meter Kelvin. Uh, which is almost 2770% uh, enhancement with respect to pure polymer, uh, as pure polymer has thermal conductivity of 0.23 watt per meter Kelvin, whereas the graphene nanoplatelet and polythermite composite uh, shows the thermal conductivity value of one watt per meter Kelvin at 10 watt percent composition, and that indicates only 350% enhancement with respect to pure polythermite. So um, the solution casting technique can retain the expanded graphite porous structure in the composite, which, um, which basically uh, retains, the, uh, retains the structure, uh, the graphitic network in the uh, composite. So this kind of continuous network of expanded graphite filler takes the advantage of high infant thermal conductivity of graphene nanosheet, which is uh, around uh, 2000 watt per meter Kelvin and allows very, efficient heat transfer over the long lengths, uh, long length scale in the composite. Also, uh, this facilitates the thermal, uh, better thermal conduction pathway in between filler uh, uh, and polymer. This overall resulted into high thermal conductivity composite value. So in conclusion, uh, we can say that very thermal, high thermal conductivity uh, 
material using polymer has been achieved in this work and expanded graphite and polymer uh, uh, gives very high value of 6.6 uh, .6 watt per meter Kelvin, which is 572% higher than 10 uh, percent graphene uh, nanoplatelet and polythyramide composite. And uh, also through the characterization, we represent the preserved uh, interconnected graphitic network uh, in, in the composite, which is directly linked to the high thermal uh, uh, conductivity of the composite. And this kind of uh, polymer uh, composite and graph uh, expanded graphite has high potential in battery and fuel cell application. So these are the references I have been used. Thank you, and any question? Uh, thank you, Fatima, for your presentation and sharing your work with all of us. Uh, I, open the, uh, I open the platform for any questions for Fatima. Perhaps Jivtesh would like to add uh, value to what Fatima has said. Yeah, I think um, we recently started doing work uh, on uh, expanded graphite and uh, Fatima has got some uh, really interesting results, which she uh, uh, showed like a uh, part of um, uh, her work. Um, yeah, high thermal conductivity polymers uh, has been a goal um, uh, uh, for a while in our group. And uh, we, um, got um, the most promising results using expanded graphite, uh, which uh, Fatima showed uh, in this pre presentation. And the main advantage of expanded graphite is that it basically uh, creates a network of graphene sheets, which are all interconnected. And so when you disperse them in polymer, you basically get this interconnected uh, network of graphene sheets, uh, which can conduct heat very efficiently across the polymer from one end to the other because all these graphene sheets are basically connected. Uh, so we get this percolation kind of an effect. And that's where Fatima sees uh, this very high uh, thermal conductivity enhancement. Um, she has been continuing this work uh, and looking at the effect of using different uh, intercalating agents. Um, and she has got more promising data, which probably she can uh, share uh, in another discussion some other day. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other question for Fatima? Suraj, Abhinash, any comments, anything to add since you are, you know, the field and how it relates to your work? At present, not from my side. Sorry. Abhinash? Well, I mean, I can uh, I can yeah, add yeah. a few things that uh, I mean. Even I have been working with Fatima in uh, this project, and we are also doing some other things with expanded graphite at this time. Uh, we are doing some things. Avinash is working on uh, phase change materials as well uh, with the expanded graphite, and uh, yeah, we also have done some electrical conductivity measurements as well, and we have some good results in those areas as well. So yeah, I'm also trying some 3D printing with them. So uh, there are a lot of things actually which we are trying with these materials right now and they're all very exciting things to work on right now. So I have a question then for the team. Uh, maybe Jivtesh can answer that. For sure. The, I'm interested in the future. So what, what, what is the theme that you're working on with this in terms of uh, what you'd like to do from a theory standpoint, from a practice standpoint, from uh, an aha standpoint? What is it that you're looking for? Right. Um, yeah, I think uh, one of the goals is to develop more thermally conductive composite materials using uh, graphene. 
graphene has been uh, known to be this wonder material with excellent thermal conductivity. And we want to see how best we can use graphene. What's the most optimum way of using graphene to enhance the thermal properties of composites? And so we are doing simulations to understand the interaction between graphene and polymer. And simultaneously, we are doing uh, performing experiments in the lab, for example, through Fatima, Swapnil, and Avinash to understand how we can optimize uh, the performance of graphene in enhancing thermal conductivity of composites. So what are the challenges involved in optimizing this performance? What are the factors, what are the drivers that uh, your hypothesis are going to affect the performance of polymers? Right, so um, how graphene's performance is affected, uh, one of the factors that uh, drives that is the interaction between graphene and polymer. So these are two very different materials and when you mix them, there is an interface between graphene and polymer. How does heat transfer take place across that interface from graphene to the polymer? That is a very important thing to understand to maximize the overall heat transfer performance. And uh, Fatima recently published a paper in ACS Applied Materials and Interfaces where she uh, looked at um, uh, improving the interface conductance at the junction between graphene and polymer uh, using some uh, very specific functionalization scheme. So that's one aspect. Um, another aspect is that when you have graphene particles which are um, distributed in a polymer, um, the graphene particles are separated basically by the polymer in between and that polymer has very poor thermal conductivity. And so when the graphene particles are separated by this um, polymer, the overall thermal conductivity tends to be poor because the graphene particles are not really in contact with one another. So how can we establish contact between graphene particles? And that's another challenge. Um, one of the ideas is to increase the concentration of the particles to such a high level that they start touching each other. And so at that point you establish percolation and you can enhance thermal conductivity. Another idea is what Fatima presented today, which is to basically use expanded graphite, which already has this sort of interconnected network of graphene particles, uh, which can, uh, which is another way of establishing this particle-particle contact. So those are some aspects, improving the thermal interaction between graphene and polymer, achieving particle-particle contact, which is a very promising way of achieving high thermal conductivity. Um, so those are a few things that we are looking at um, uh, in different polymer systems, such as epoxy, uh, polyethylamide, and so on. Yeah. So your work is driven experimentally. You do the experiment and then say, okay, does it work? Does it not work? The other way to do it, and this is what, what I'm getting at, is is there a way to to do it, do some simulations, uh, and then uh, minimize the number of ex physical experiments that you have to do. Absolutely, um, definitely. I think um, when, I mean, Raj graduated and he was basically the person doing the computations. A lot of that, this work is driven by computations. In fact, the paper that we just published experimentally, we, Raj first did the computations and he showed that, uh, you know, a certain um, functionalization scheme was more uh, um, uh, effective in improving this thermal interaction between graphene and polymer. And the experiments were done afterwards. So experiments were driven by theory. So, um, so we separately submitted, I mean, the theory paper, the experimental paper was published recently, but you're right. I mean, it's a combination of theory and experiments. That's very exciting. So, so with, with Fatima, she's doing it experimentally, Swapnil's doing it theoretically or experimentally, Avinash? Well, uh, yeah, at present, I mean, uh, uh, Raj Mohan was the one who was doing computations, molecular dynamics. And I'm basically looking for somebody new uh, who can come in and do uh, computations. Uh, and if any of the students in the group are interested in computations, I mean, I'm fine, I'm perfectly fine with them doing uh, MD, but I'm actually looking for students who can come in and do, pick up the computations. So yeah, I'll be, yeah, looking for some new students, yeah. So there's another question, which I think uh, will be of interest to, to Rachel. Uh, 
one of the things that re, uh, Rachel, why don't you tell them about your uh, your the 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 uh, talk that you gave at the lightning talk and how uh, you may be able to help him in terms of figuring out what the next stage is. Um, well, one of the things that I kind of found while I was doing a lot of research on using uh, kind of my field in, uh, in this kind of material science capacity was just kind of using machine learning to kind of find out in advance what potential properties new materials would have. Um, I don't know if that's the kind of things Raj was working on uh, prior to leaving. Right, I mean, yeah, that was one of the goals through computations to predict uh, what kind of material properties we can achieve, you know, through different schemes, yeah. Okay, what kind of simulations are you guys doing now? I mean, the simulations are mostly are, um, uh, um, there are two directions. One is uh, molecular dynamic simulations, where, uh, you know, we uh, uh, simulate the atomic motions, and through that we can predict different properties like thermal conductivity and so on. Um, so it's a very atomistic kind of a simulation. Um, the other is uh, basically what is known as first principles, uh, where we uh, derive um, the force interactions, you know, from quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, force interactions uh, in any simulation are the most important parameter, um, because if you know the force interactions accurately, you can accurately predict uh, atomic velocities and so on, energies, and then you can get more accurate results. So those are the two different directions. Uh, that we are uh, working on, yeah. Okay. The advantage of MD simulations is that we can simulate more large scale systems. Um, that's why we use MD to simulate polymers, polymer composites. Um, the first principle simulations, uh, we reserve them more for smaller systems, which are periodic in nature, and we can work with like very small uh, unit cells, like two atom unit cells, four atom unit cells, and so on. Interesting, okay. Um... Yeah, the ones I'd seen were they were more just kind of using like uh, statistical techniques instead of like these kinds of physics space models. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how viable that is, though. Um, I know sometimes the issue is kind of like or most of the time the issue is a lack of data. Um, so I don't know if that's right. kind of a wall you guys have run into. No, I, I uh, completely understand the idea of machine learning. I mean, if you have already a database, um, you can use that to then make predictions as to how um, you know, what kind of properties you can achieve if the parameter was changed to a certain value, for example. So it's basically like data mining. Hmm. Um, and uh, I've been thinking about that, but we are not at that point where, uh, you know, we uh, we have like a whole lot of data and uh, we are still uh, at, at a very physics uh, based um, modeling level. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Just for all of you. OU is they has invested a huge amount in what I would call, uh, 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 which is data mining and stuff like that. But that is based on the notion that the data that you have is complete, is meaningful, and is accurate. And that and so when you data mine, you're working in in prescriptive analytics. That's what it's called, prescriptive analytics. The future for the sorts of things that Yutesh is doing and that we are doing in our laboratory requires predictive analytics, where you have limited data. And then using that limited data, how do you simulate the future? Right. And we know that the future can never be simulated exactly. It's just not possible. And so the challenge then comes about is that if you, it becomes a control problem. So if you, if you in controls, you, the initial point that you start with has a huge influence on the final, uh, final what comes out at the end. And so, if you came up with different scenarios and you said, "Aha! If I did such and such, uh, the benefit is going to be there. Or I get these properties. If I did such and such, it's going to be there." Then you can rank order them and say, "Aha! This may be something that I'm going to look at." So it's not giving you a total direction, but it gives you a gut feel saying, yeah, maybe that's 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 the way in which I should go. So the so I'm very interested, we are very interested in predictive analytics. And I think Jitesh also will benefit from this whole issue of predictive analytics. Definitely. And so when we we Jitesh, you're involved in hiring new faculty and stuff like that. If there are people every, I mean everybody, every Tom Dick and Harry comes along and says he's going to use machine learning. I mean that's the in thing. 
but that, that's not taking the field forward. Right, right. That's a crutch to do things quicker or faster or something like that, but it doesn't move the field forward. So we need to get somebody in predictive analytics. Yeah. And 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 the problem that, for example, physics-based problems. Uh, what you're doing there is fascinating because it informs you or gives you an idea in terms of what new terms in physics need to be added. So yeah. you can go along and say, I'm going to add, make this thing so damn complicated that it's going to be that you can't solve it, but you're wasting your time. It's like a dog catching its tail. But if there was predictive analytics, you'd know which factor is likely to help you make the model more accurate. Right, right. So I, I'm very interested in, in those sorts of problems. All right, so Neil, back to you. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for having a good discussion after the presentation we had. Uh, does anyone have any final comments before we wrap things up? Okay, uh, then, oh, did anyone speak up? Um, okay, no. Uh, just a one so, final. Uh, Thanks for doing your talk, Fatima. It was very interesting. Yeah. Is it, is Rachel going to ask anything? I think my mic's messing up a little bit. So. Oh, okay. No no, I'm not uh, asking anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so th thank you everyone for joining us today for our GSC seminar. Uh, I hope to see you all again uh, next week with our next week and the coming weeks with our seminars. So have a good day, everyone. Bye.